My dearest viewer, dear traveler, I'm not going to be wasting your time even for a second. Because my friends, we have amazing news upon us. Amazing news brought to us by Albion Online themselves. The official YouTube page has posted a few minutes ago, maybe a few hours ago, this video right here entitled Albion Online Tracking. Now, if you don't know what tracking is, well, neither should you. If you don't watch Mogdan, who literally predicted this like a month ago, based on the thumbnail of their latest dev talk, I predicted that there's going to be a system that comes into play and that makes us able to hunt those creatures down because basically the shapeshifter staffs that we know we're getting according to the previous dev talk are basically heads on a stick those heads are not just magically manifesting themselves even though hey i know magic is possible but at the same time to get those heads we gotta go on a hunt and i predicted that's gonna be the hunting system with the help of butterscotch who dug up some code we came up with a whole theory that right now is proven to be true so my friends, I told ya! But let's watch the rest of this. I did watch this video before. Uh, right now I just ended like a nine hour and a half stream. So uh, I wanted to record this video right after so I get you guys this information as fast as possible because man, this is interesting. So we're gonna be going through this and I'm gonna be stopping at key moments because there are some details that I feel like a ton of people will miss. You guys know me, I'm not just reacting to stuff. I'm digging and digging and digging. And you know what they say, whoever seeks shall find. Let's go with this chat. And let me tell you, I did find some things. First of all, I found possibly a rework to the world boss system. I found a possible questing system coming in Albion Online and maybe even a bounty hunting system. There's some really interesting stuff that I'm going to be bringing into your attention, dearest of viewers. So sit back, relax and get ready because you're in for a treat. Hello and welcome to another Albion Online Dev Talk. In our last video, we introduced the shapeshifter weapons and their role in our long-term commitment to keep expanding the you are what you wear item system. Oh, yeah. Today, I want to introduce tracking, an all new open world. First things first, and I don't want to say more about this right now, but I just want to bring this into your attention. Take a good look at those tracks. Keep them in mind. I'm going to be coming back to them in a second. Activity and explain how it fits into our plans for the open world of Albion Online. The open world on the Royal Continent, and especially in the Outlands, is the heart of Albion Online. Here, the sandbox gameplay happens. Resources are harvested, adventures play out, and battles are fought. And new players are being killed constantly by Zerg squads, but we don't talk about those. We don't talk about those. Keeping the First open thing that I want to point right now, chat, Googly Moogly 69. Nice. I told you that I'm going to be pointing out uh, hidden details. I didn't lie. It's a hidden detail. Googly Moogly 69. That's very nice. B moving forward, I'm not joking. is a central goal. <laughs> and we're constantly Laying looking for jokes, opportunities to this. improve it. With tracking, we want to introduce a new type of activity which challenges players to... My friends, there's different tracks for different creatures. And you're like, oh, duh, Captain Obvious, of course. How are you supposed to know what you're going to be hunting if you don't see specific tracks? Well, you've never heard about that in Albion. Think about it. When you're doing a solo dungeon, you don't know if the chest at the end will be purple, legendary, or blue. Or even green on the inside nowadays. When you do a corrupted dungeon, you don't know what you're going to be facing. When you go in a tier 8 zone, you don't know what you're going to be finding. This game is solely based on RNG and right now this is breaking the RNG by telling you what you're going to find the second we start. By telling you exactly what you're going to get before you get it. Could this be the precursor of a better system in Albion that I feel like Albion is very much lacking, which is a system present in all other MMOs? What do I mean by that? You want to hunt the set of the Panther in World of Warcraft, let's say, I'm just inventing a name. You know where to farm that. You don't know when it's going to drop, but you know the steps that you need to take. Same thing with Elder Scrolls Online. You want to hunt for the set of the Dragonborn. All right, perfect. You go and hunt for the set of the Dragonborn in the Dragonborn dungeon. You know where that set drops, and so you go there and farm for it. In Albion, you have no idea. You go in a tier 8 dungeon, you might get less than a tier 4 dungeon. You go in a tier 4 dungeon, you might get more than a tier 7 dungeon. It's all random. And this randomness, it's not bad, but it's a little bit 
too random. There should be some parameters. Parameters that I've talked about multiple times in the past, including the loot parameters. A purple chest shouldn't fall below 1 million silver or 500k. A legendary chest shouldn't fall below 1 million silver and so on and so forth. You should be able to tell what you're going to be able to get from doing a certain activity. You shouldn't walk out of a corrupted dungeon without having a ton of silver on you and you shouldn't be able to do a hellgate without walking there richer or dead. But my friend, that's entirely possible right now in Albion. And it seems like they're looking to change that by basically telling you what you're gonna get before you get it. And based on what Robin will say in this video, I have strong reasons to believe that this is actually gonna be a small change that's gonna create a major change in Albion Online. Now let's move forward. Again, it's just an extra thing that I wanted to point Roam out. the open world in pursuit of a hunted target. Unlike other open world objectives, the focus isn't to bring players into PvP this fights over objectives, but rather increase the amount of players roaming the world in different group sizes and create more opportunities for incidental encounters between those groups. Here's how it works. Players will be able to craft a tracking kit, which they can use to interact a tracking kit, so a new cra a new gathering tool in the Destiny bot, basically. Huh. I wonder who predicted this like a week ago based on the code sent by Butterscotch, who's a legend, by the way. Chat! We were right about everything, and this is not the only thing we've been right about. New potions are coming. They only revealed the top of the barrel, but the bottom of the barrel is the best part. With tracks Just stay tuned. found in the open world. Once they've read a track, they are given a new location to search for follow-up tracks. Look this location right doesn't have to be in the same region. It can be in a neighboring so region, and it typically won't be a specific spot. Instead, you'll be challenged to search a wider area for the next track. This is going to be my what new you'll favorite find at each up. step is also not set in stone. A typical case is going to be simply finding another track or catching up with your track target. But we're also planning to include a variety of other random encounters for you to run into, like meeting other hunters from one of our mob factions or coming across a hidden treasure. I want you to understand what this implies. This implies random events. This implies random events. You do something, you trigger an event in the world. I don't think this system is going to stop here. And I'm going to be giving you some extra reasons a little bit later on during this video. So let's keep moving forward, but just keep this in mind. ...at the next track. Of course, you can also engage other open world objectives along the way. But there is a time limit to each tracking step, so I don't let your target escape. To be With honest, I feel like it's a little bit too much of a generous time limit. Like, an hour... Every step you do successfully complete, too much. your chances of finally catching up increase, and eventually you will face your target. So cool. See, the, the thing that I was wrong about was the fact that I thought this would happen in a dungeon. And I still stand by the fact that I think it would be better for this to happen in a dungeon because that way it can be made to be a solely PvE experience. Like a dungeon, it closes once you've entered, it's just you and the mob, it's a really tough encounter, you can bring the appropriate set because you know it's just gonna be PvE. I feel like that would have been better. But at the same time, I still like this idea of just taking the fight in the open world where you still risk to actually lose the fight to a player rather than to a mob. I would just have preferred the first option because I feel like Albion already has a ton of PvP. There's time they add some PvE, like just PvE. Typically that means you're going to be in for a fight and don't think you can simply bring more people to ensure victory. I want you to notice something. Uh, listen to this first. If too many players come close, the target will be spooked and run off. So the target is spooked if multiple players come close. I want you to notice that those guys are not teamed up. At the same time, they are in the red zone. It might be different in the black zone if they're not teamed up for reasons that I'm going to be showing later on during this video. There's a group of four people fighting one of those mobs and the mobs doesn't seem to be disengaging. So um, that's an interesting thing. We're going to so be looking at that in a second. So you'll have to chase it again. With this behavior, we I want this to... Because this is actually punishing for people that are trying to abuse the system. It's actually punishing them, which... And I kind of like that. challenging fights against track targets aimed at solo like and small group play. Because again, it's the same thing that goes with the Zergs versus solo players, which is what Nomad is saying. And that is basically the idea that you could just stop this behavior of uh, massive Zergs hunting solo players by just adding a Desiree level and making them so squishy that they're basically not capable of doing that. Let's say dungeon diving. The reason they close dungeons is because, like solo dungeons, is because people used to go there with groups. How do you fix that? 
Simple! You disarray them to eternity and beyond. And you make a group of 10 people as weak as a group of 10 people with tier 3 armor. If they want to go in groups of 10. If they want to go solo, then it's alright. Then you don't disarray them. Then you let them fight. If they want to go in a duo, you disarray them a little bit. But if they bring 10 people, that should be a very much uh, a punishable thing. By the disarray level. And because these encounters are happening in randomized locations only known to the hunters, Players don't have to fear constantly getting their prey contested by larger groups. I love this. So It seems like those uh, targets are only going to show up to the persons that are hunting them. It's kind of like a solo dungeon map. You pop a map, it doesn't appear on the map. You see where it is, but it's not actually there. It's appearing over there once you get yourself close. Which what is nice. targets I love that. can you track? Well... Initially, you'll be able to track rare creatures, matching the new shape. I want you to notice that he said initially you're going to be able to track rare creatures. Shapeshifter weapon forms. Which is exactly These what creatures said, will by drop the, way. the all new artifact items, which can be used to craft shapeshifter artifact weapons. Oh, yeah, I know. On top of I that, know, Robin. they will the, also the drop a wide potions variety of alchemical. have worked out. Did you guys remember when I said this that the potions uh, that we revealed a few months ago, also thanks to Balascotch, are going to be dropped by those mobs? In Initially, I thought they were going to be found, like the resources, in the dungeon, because I thought this would be a dungeon. But apparently, those mobs will actually drop potions. Check this out. On I mean, top uh, of resources. That, they will also drop a wide variety of alchemical ingredients. These ingredients can be used to craft an all new set of. I want you to remember something. Before I show you this, I want to show you something. So, a few months ago, I received this code from Butterscotch. Code digged from the game files themselves. This code revealed a tornado in a bottle, an alarm potion, a bottle time, and yada, yada, yada. Those potions are honestly overpowered. Let me give you an example. Reduces the cooldowns of the main hand weapon, gathering solve, gathering speed increase. Uh, and the best example that I have for this is this right here. You have an alarm potion that you throw at the targeted position and when an enemy enters, it alerts you. You have a scout in a bottle. But I want you to focus on the tornado in a bottle. Throw the potion at the targeted position, releasing a tornado. Knocks back, so it has a knockback. You throw the tornado and it has a knockback. Rare potions, which will be part of a larger rework if we've been right about that, does that mean that we're getting a scout in a bottle? Does that mean that we're getting a cooldown reduction potion? Does that mean that we're getting a potion that allows us to dungeon dive? Does that mean that we're getting a hellfire potion, a gathering solve, a berserk potion, a cleansing potion, and an acid potion? All of those potions are overpowered. My friends, in case you want to know more information about this, again, I've really, I'm gonna release actually a video about this. I've released one in the past, but I didn't really believe this was true. So I'm just gonna scroll down to them right now. In case you want to see more about them, just pause the video and you are gonna be able to read them and expect a video coming up tomorrow detailing this system them even further. I just wanted to bring that into your attention because, man, it seems like I've been right. We've been right all along. System. By the way, massive further shout out to Butterscotch. Without him, I didn't, I wouldn't have access to that code. So further that's down the line, legend, we're planning legend. to use the tracking system to let you hunt all kinds of monsters. Listen to this. The rework Listen of this the process. potion enchanting system. Further down the line, we're planning to use the tracking system to let you hunt all kinds of monstrous creatures. So you're going to be able to hunt all kinds of monstrous creatures. I want to think about what this could be. Do you think this is going to be open world bosses? I don't think it will. I think there's going to be some objectives, but I don't think that's the main thing. What is this update and who is this update for? Well, this update is an update that in engages the solo player and duo players maybe in the open world activities. Because we've seen three or more players are actually spooking the mob. So it's a two-man activity at most. It seems to be a two-man activity at most. So if this is for the small party like the two-man party or maybe the solo player shouldn't the group players get something and what could the group players get besides a world boss rework all kinds of creatures what could those creatures be that's the first thing that i want to bring into your attention and the next thing is coming right after this by the way robin sorry for doing you dirty and stopping on that frame i'm sorry man and we're even considering expanding the system to offer other dynamic open world objectives down the line which don't so we're looking to expand the system to add more dynamic open world objectives down the line which don't necessarily have anything to do with the tracking system that's don't really need right. to be related to tracking at all my friends so an activity 
that's not related to tracking at all necessarily that's going to be an open world objective we know it's not talking about tracking because he just said that we know it's not talking about bosses because he just said that we know he's not talking about objectives because he just said that so what this could be there's two options in my head right now and i might be wrong about this i'm admitting that there might be wrong about this because i i quite literally am left without any clairvoyance potions so i don't know but my predictions are as follows first of all this might be a quest-like system. Because think about it. I know you're like, oh no, quest in Albion Online, that would ruin the game. No, my friend, open your eyes. What is this system? You are going in the open world. You are finding tracks. Well, can't you replace the tracks with an NPC? You click on the tracks and the tracks send you to another location. Isn't that kind of like sending you on a quest? And at that location, you click another pair of tracks. Couldn't that be an NPC? And then at some point, you fight a mob. Couldn't that be a dungeon? You know what? This is already that. This is already a quest. So what if they expand on this to include the lore of Albion? Which, by the way, Albion has amazing lore. And the second option in my, in my head could be a bounty hunter system. I know a lot of players want that to happen. I know a lot of players are dreaming about that, including myself. And I know a lot of players are realizing how well that system would work in Albion Online. I don't know if they would add it. There would be some things that they need to work out before they do that, definitely. But I do wish they would do that. I do wish they would do that. So my friends... Just pop in the question. And again, those questions I develop a little bit in an upcoming video. So stay tuned for that as well. Again, for the sake of not making this video too long, I'm not getting into all of those topics. I just want to bring those, those uh, topics into your attention so I get your imagination a little bit sparked up. Let's continue with the video because there's still more interesting stuff. I hope you're as excited as we are about setting oh, out on rare creature hunts using Look the upcoming the tracking feature footage. in the open world and about using the ingredients gathered from these creatures. So there's one, two, three, four, five people. Oh no, th that's the mob, sorry. Oh no, wait. So one, one person over here, two, three, four, five. There's five people over here and a mob. Features to craft. One of them becomes a shapeshift. The mob is still Shape here somewhere. Look, the mob is there. So we have one, two, three, four, five people. This creature is not getting spooked. My theory is that those players are not allied and they're just in small groups. And uh, my theory is confirmed by the fact that they're fighting each other. And as you can see right here, this guy is fighting this guy, this guy is fighting this guy, and so, on and so forth. They're fighting each other. They're not a team. They're two teams competing for that mob. But I think the mob should still get spooked by that. Because then a workaround that people could find to actually cheese this would be to just bring themselves the friends that they need to gank somebody, but just not team up with them and fight the mobs with 10 people. That would be hard. They would need to make sure they don't hit each other with AoEs. They would be very vulnerable. But I think the creature should still get spooked. I don't know. It's just my idea. It's just my idea. It's gathered it from these creatures to, to craft shapeshifter weapons and all new rare potions. I love this. Ingredients coming Listen from tracking well. may also play a key role in our next Dev Talks key topic. So Join ingredients. Listen to this. And all new Very rare important. potions. Ingredients coming from tracking may also play a key role in our next Dev Talks key topic. Join us next time when we. So ingredients from tracking will play a key role in the next thing. We and the next thing an is all new way to leave a permanent mark in the world of Albion. Legendary items. Legendary items, my friends. Do you guys remember the first thing that I've said, whatever I've seen the announcement, like the roadmap announcement for 2023 when they've announced the legendary uh, weapons? I've said that there's probably going to be a quest like system. Here you go. Here you go. I'm sorry that I'm left without any clairvoyance potions, but there you go, adventurers. There you go, the wizard told you this. My friends, I'm excited. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. And I know, I know you might be like, oh, Mog, but you've been wrong about the necromancer weapon line. Oh, yeah? I mean, yeah, I was. But just wait a second. I want you to count how many weapons are in the warrior tree. There's seven. I want you to count how many weapons are in the hunter's tree. There's six. This is the seventh. Now I want you to count how many weapons are in the mage weapon line. That's where the necromancer will fit in. I'm calling it right now. That's where the necromancer will fit in. Now what do you guys think about this thing? How excited are you about this? And what's your favorite feature? For me, just to answer my own question, I think this is going to be my new favorite content. I think I'm going to be doing this all day long, just hunting for creatures, not even caring about players. Like, I might actually become a, PV a PvE player because of this. It's honestly such an amazing system that I'm so happy to have present in my favorite MMOs. Like, I'm genuinely... 
a little bit overhyped for this. I'm still gonna play WoW Classic though. I'm still gonna play WoW Classic Hardcore, so wait for that. But yeah, chat, that's what I'm excited about. I'm really curious to see what you are excited about. I'm sorry for the longer video, but I wanted to bring a ton of things into your attention. I think I'm the only person that you know that can make a 17 minute video from a 5 minute video. So hey, I consider that a skill. Let me know what you guys are most excited about in the comment section down below. Love you. We decided to finally launch Patreon after seeing so many people willing to help us out. So if you want to help us out, if you want to support our content, please consider joining our Patreons by accessing the link in the description down below. It truly helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. We love you all.